everyone, my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today I am so excited because we are going to be visiting a really highly requested topic and discussing body writing. I know I have talked about this before in a few other videos, but I've never really gotten down into the details of how to do this play. So that is what we're going to be doing here in this video. Now, before we get into the discussion, I do want to first start off with a definition and body writing is basically what it sounds like from the word. It's a form of BDSM play where one partner is writing words using some kind of instrument on the other person's body. Although it does have a simple definition, it can be quite complex in terms of motivation and application, which I will do my best to discuss the breadth of in this discussion. I do also find that in terms of play or how often you will see it, it tends to be overlooked in favor of flashier things like violet wands or floggers. And while it is sometimes brought up in discussion for like play for newbies, especially if they're looking to get into more like humiliation or degradation, it tends to be kind of looked down on by more like advanced players as being like too simplistic or not heavy enough. But I would say that one should be careful not to underestimate this form of play. And I do think it does have a place in the repertoire of more advanced kinksters. So what is so appealing about having somebody write on their partner's skin? Well, I already mentioned one, which is humiliation and degradation. It can be really powerful to have a partner tell you that you're a slut or a whore or whatever words you like to use for that. But it can be even more powerful to not have that just be said to you, but also literally have it emblazoned on your skin as a reminder, not just for the moment when the thing is being said, but for the whole duration of the scene or for however long you have that word on your body. This can also be used in the opposite fashion as well. I think I mentioned this in my video on Praise Kink, but you can also take this as an opportunity for some body affirmation of telling your partner that they have adorable dimples or like a really cute butt and writing that on them as a way to kind of build up their self-confidence and to praise their body. This can even more border into body worship. And while I do think we oftentimes consider this play to be something where the top is writing on the bottom partner's body, I think you can play with this where the bottom is actually doing it almost as like a service or as a form of body worship, like I just mentioned. Maybe that means leaving words of praise for the mistress's feet on her soles or leaving little love notes on your top's back, you know, cause like tops can also use a self-confidence boost every once in a while too. So I think there is definitely ways you can play with maybe the stereotype of what direction body writing usually goes in. It can also definitely be used for a more practical purpose in DS dynamics. It can be used as a punishment tool and it can also be used as a practical reminder to have a submissive complete certain tasks. So maybe you write on their arm remember to get milk at the store or leave it, you know, somewhere under their clothing where they can look at it discreetly. And I think that can be a really fun way of keeping track of assignments and tasks that you leave for your submissive. Now, when it comes down to the brass tacks of how to do body writing, the questions usually lie not so much in how to do it, but what supplies to use and what the best thing is for body writing. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten comments asking me, Evie, what is the best thing to use for body writing? And I don't want to burst anybody's bubble here, but this isn't really a one size fits all answer kind of situation. It really typically boils down to personal preference and experimenting with what you like best. However, these are some of the most common ones that I have found, and they can kind of be broadly thought of in two big categories. The first category would be makeup tools, things like lipstick, lip liner, eyeliner, eye coal. If you wanna get even more messy, you can use things like cream products. If you wanna you know, swipe your finger through a cream blush and then write kind of big sloppy letters on somebody's skin, that can be quite fun. Now the other category that most people go towards is more traditional writing utensils, things like pens, markers, quill ink, and that can come in a lot of different varieties as well. 
Makeup products have the advantage that they are typically easier to take off if you have a makeup remover wipe or some kind of makeup removing liquid that you can use with a cotton ball or with a washcloth. Though they are less likely to stain the skin, pinks and reds in particular can still be quite staining and that can be something you need to take into account. Writing utensils can be more natural to use, especially if you don't typically use makeup products, but they can be more difficult. Like ballpoint pens, while they are quite cheap, tend to clog pretty easily and can also be more difficult to use on the skin. Washable markers can be pretty messy and overall they just tend to be more difficult to remove and require a lot more scrubbing. If you're using this on somebody who has more mature skin, if it has sort of a crepey texture to it, it can be quite irritating to like dig a pen into that skin and have to scrub it with like an exfoliating washcloth. So also consider that when you are choosing what location to do this with and what materials you're using because different skin is going to react to different things. Speaking of which, you really have to consider each individual skin when you are choosing what utensils to use and what you actually want the scene to consist of. If you are in a situation where you absolutely cannot have any lasting marks, don't do the play on that area of the skin. I sort of consider it the same way I think about like bruises, for example, because there's no way to guarantee that something is going to come off completely and not leave any kind of staining, any kind of residue behind, because unless you've done that exact thing with that exact person on that exact portion of their body, Things can be different from day to day. It can also depend on like, is this a fresh product or has it dried out a little bit? How hydrated is the person? Is this going to be done outdoors where it's gonna like sit in the skin for a while in the sunlight or is it going to be done, you know, just for a moment and then wiped away very quickly? All of that can affect how likely it is that something is going to leave residue behind. And I just think there's too many possible variables there where if somebody absolutely cannot have marks <laughs> that, you know, you should probably think a little bit more like before you decide to just go ham and cover their whole body in like nasty letters and then find out that like, oops, everything left giant red stains. Uh, oh, hope you have a good time at work tomorrow covering up your whole body in 90 degree weather. Yeah, something to consider. And this is why I really do think that like spot testing is super important so you can have that moment where you can understand how a particular product is going to work on someone's skin. Also tops, please check this on your own body first so you know how difficult it is to use on the skin and how difficult it is to remove so you make sure you have the right products on hand for the scene to be able to remove the item. I know a lot of people who like think it's a great idea to use like permanent markers on the skin and they don't really think about how they're gonna take it off and then suddenly they're sitting in the shower for 45 minutes desperately scrubbing trying to get the giant bitch they've written on their arm off before they have to go see their parents for dinner. Yeah. Again, not a great situation to be in and I do think it is worth being thoughtful so you don't accidentally end up in that situation. Now, if you do wanna take your play up a notch, the way that I personally recommend doing that is through looking at the tools that we use in other areas of kink play. So for example, metal claws, like the type we oftentimes talk about for sensation play, can be used with deaf hands to leave messages that faintly remain on the arms for a short period of time. If you want to really take it up a notch, you can use things like knives or even scalpels to leave more permanent messages. However, permanent marks are not really in the scope of this video, so if you are interested in that, I highly recommend going to classes where you can learn about the risk for that type of play in person in detail because it is just outside of the scope of what I can cover here today, but I do think it is worth mentioning because some people do take body writing in that direction. Now, if you're looking to get into body writing for yourself, there are several different ways you can kind of dip your toe in the water. One thing that a lot of people like to do is they use body writing as something before a play party or before another scene. Maybe they have a situation where their partner writes like, property of master blah 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 on their chest or maybe they leave little messages that way people know how to interact with them in the play space like maybe touch here or poke here or pinch here it can be a pretty fun way of exploring public play in a more controlled setting others like to have a subtle word or phrase written on their body that they leave under clothing for a longer duration of time this can be another good way of maybe having a more 
subtle way of enacting your DS in a way that's going to be completely concealed from other people. This is also good to do actually on an ongoing basis for a long distance relationship where you actually have an assignment where the bottom or submissive partner is expected to write this phrase on themselves on a daily or on a regular basis and leave it under their clothing. Other people make an entire scene out of the writing process itself, like maybe you get an area of the dungeon set up and you pass out markers to all of your friends and they contribute to the scene by writing different things and drawing things on different parts of your body. I've actually done a scene like this myself before on a kinky camping trip and it was super fun and I highly recommend it, especially if you are into more participatory, communally based kink scenes. And always feel free to use your imagination. I feel like this is an area of play, especially that really opens itself up for just fun, like leaving a little with a bunch of washable markers and then having them get markers on themselves as much as they do the walls and their actual sketch pad. Or maybe it goes in a little bit of a darker direction where you are marking a property for sale, or maybe you are having a little piggy go to market and you're outlining the parts of their body that are going to be cut up by the butcher. Or maybe it's just a silly lighthearted scene focused on body confidence. You can really take this in a lot of different directions and it really is as vast as the language you have accessible to you. Not to mention this can also easily be incorporated into other scenes that you might be doing. Things like sensation play, bondage, pet play, CGL. This is a great thing to kind of add into the activities you're already doing just to make it a little bit different and spice things up a little. Though be aware that though this play can be fun, it is not without risk. It might seem really hot in your head to have 20 people write on your body that you're dumb or stupid or whatever else, but then in reality, actually having all of that on your body can suddenly feel way, way too real. And it can be quite difficult to account for that ahead of time. And like some of the stories I've already told in this video, maybe you have a really important work meeting or a family outing and you're left there trying to desperately scrub off a message you put on your skin and nothing you do will get it out. And so that's why I think it's so important to talk to your partner about this before you get into a scene so that way you can come up with something of a game plan should any of these situations arise. Also, a lot of the products that people use for body writing aren't technically body safe, and there is always the possibility that dyes or fragrance or something else in the materials can be irritating or even allergenic to the skin. So that's something else that's another you know point in the bucket for spot testing before you go into a full on scene. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in today's video about body writing. I was hoping to get into a little bit about body painting specifically in this, but I have unfortunately run out of time. So I guess we're gonna do a part two for this where I will tell you all about body painting. If you wanna see some examples of body writing and self play and everything else that's related to this, I actually have some great photo shoots and some videos you can watch over on Patreon where I go into this whole process and doing it on myself as an example. So if you want to check that out, a link to it will be down in the description box below. If you have any other comments or questions, you can also leave that down in the comment section. If you like this video, if you want to, if you haven't already, please do subscribe and make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related activities. I already mentioned this, but Patreon has a lot of exclusive content like videos and photo shoots where I can show you guys things that I can't really do here on YouTube. So if you want to, again, link to that will be down in the description box below. If you already support me over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you guys next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.